Hi, I'm Melinda Van Fleet, and welcome to the Good Karma Success Coach Podcast. I'm an author, speaker, and success coach who helps women believe in themselves, build confidence, and take action. In 2009, my husband Ryan and I were laid off at the same time, and we moved to the Florida Keys without jobs, not knowing anyone, hardly any money, and we never even been here, but we made it. And now, not every day is sunshine and rainbows, but we're living our best lives. All along in our journey, I've always said that someday when we get our shit together, we will help others. So each week, my intent is to be relatable and bring you tactical tips, tools, share my learnings and stories that can help inspire or transform you wherever you are in your career or general life and make an impact. I strongly believe that if I can do it, you can do it too. So what's stopping you? Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Good Karma Success Coach Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. I have a very special guest and very good friend, Deborah Lupien. She is the voice of the Akashic Records and has been on this podcast many times. I'm so honored to have her back today. Welcome, Deborah. Hi, Melinda. Great to be here. Great to be here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We just recorded a beautiful meditation, and I'm releasing both this podcast and the meditation at the same time, brought separate because I wanted the meditation to be a podcast. You can just go back and listen to Deborah's voice, and I really wanted to capture the essence of what we're going to talk about separately on this podcast, which is her very successful book. It's actually two books that came out a few months ago. I think in August, right? Or was it September? October. Oh my gosh, the time has been so crazy this year. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at both of them. Both of them are in front of me. And they all they both had to do with her 21-day meditation. So I wanted Deborah to walk everyone through how this all transpired and about the Facebook group and how then the book and the workbook kind of came to fruition. So I'm passing it to you. Okay, well, it all happened last December. So a year ago, all of a sudden, Metatron asked me to do this meditation for 21 days, 15 minutes a day, because I am notorious for not doing regular meditation, even though I channel. And well, I guess, you know, I'm connected a lot. So I don't feel like I have to sit down and do a separate meditation. But obviously, it was important. So it's like, hey, if Metatron's asking, I'm going to do it. So I sat about doing it. Didn't do it consecutive 21 days because life, right? Like everybody. But I did complete the 21 days. And what I discovered was Metatron had this huge plan that I was, of course, not aware of, that this would become a challenge that we would share with the world, inviting all of you, particularly lightworkers, to take their own 21 day challenge because it's a peace process. It is magical. Miracles happened during this process. So before I launch the book, I'm getting ready to launch it and Metatron says, no, you need to do this and launch a group at the same time, a beta group to go through the meditation. So I got pushed way out of my comfort zone, but okay, I went along for the ride, and I'm so glad. Such a blessing. So about 150 people came together, and we did this challenge together, 21 days. And the amazing things that came out of that, the shifts that happened for people, connecting with their angels when they had never been able to before, and even the ones who were further along in their journey already connecting with their guides and knowing about their gifts, went to a deeper level, which is what happened for me. I found that my channeling after that, in the beginning of the year, had expanded. There was more sensory input. The information came deeper. And I I got a letter from a lady who is a, a psychic and does readings, very spiritually connected, and she said that it took her gift to a deeper level, just like it had done mine, but individual for her. I just got a letter the other day from somebody who said that she had started channeling for herself and for others. That came out of it. 
Well, who knew yeah. that that would happen from just making the commitment to show up for 21 days? Yeah. Yeah. It was, Go on. Sorry. I just want to share one more story and then I want you yeah, to tell. No, it. you sure. Yeah. I was going to say share more from the Facebook group because it was fascinating to read everyone's stories. So yeah, share the stories. It's really cool. Yeah, the one that really got me was this woman who had a, a bad relationship with her mother because when she was an infant, her mother had been ill and not in her life. She had two surrogate mothers who took care of her. And at some point when her mother was ready to come back, those surrogate mothers left and here she is with a new mother. And her infant self felt abandoned. But of course, she didn't really remember that. She wasn't conscious of it. That trauma was just there in her soul needing to be resolved. So through this process, and I think she was maybe halfway when it happened, those two surrogate women came to her in her meditation. They had crossed over. She was able to connect with them and remember the story, connecting the dots to why she had felt abandoned, which then allowed her to have some forgiveness in her heart for her mother. And whether the two of them make up or not doesn't matter. What matters is that it shifted her, her understanding of herself, her value, and who she was in the world. It was just, it was one of those miracles that showed up. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, I started meditating in May of 2018, and I have never missed a day. So when you started this challenge, I just thought it was the best idea because we all hear, I'm sure you would agree with this, I don't have time, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it was just you really pulling all these people together to make this concerted effort to do it. And, and then you, and then you wrote about it. How did you end up putting it into the books? Well, when I went through my own 21 day process, I recorded my experience. I always, when I channel, I have my fingers on the keyboard and I'm typing as fast as I'm seeing and feeling. So I always do that. At the end of the 21 days, then I had all of those written accounts that it was obvious to me when I finished writing them all, this is going to be a book because it was so marvelous and I did experience myself a transformation. I knew it had to be shared. It, was, it came clear to me at that point, this is what Metatron had in mind all the time. But then it, it was even bigger than that because by him pushing me into doing the beta group, at the same time as doing the book, every day of that 21 days in our, our Facebook support group, I got a new message from Metatron to share with the group. So they not only had the 21 messages that I got, but they had their own message each day. That became the workbook so that they could go through and have all of this material to help them go through, to encourage and support them. And then even when it was over, more messages came. So those became the bonus book. But when you purchase these books, you get that free bonus of the extra messages from Metatron. And on top of that, if more come in the future, I will add them to that bonus book. So it will be a living work. It will keep expanding. Yeah, it's just amazing. I really laugh when I read the humorous conversations that you have with Metatron. <laughs> He, he kind of calls you out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Because I think if someone doesn't really know that much about the archangels, like they don't really know some of, you know, the personalities, even your spirit guides are humorous and, you know, have a whimsy way about them. So do you want to share a little bit about how uh, Metatron calls you out? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, if, if I'm not putting the, the the effort in and I'm not doing the follow through, he will scold me. And <laughs> I really feel chastised because, you know, it's Metatron yelling at me, essentially. I mean, it's, it's all done with love, of course. Right. But, you know, he, he really does. And it's a good thing because we all need that discipline. And, of course, he realizes I'm going to listen to him because he's proven over and over. He knows what he's talking about. Right. And... <laughs> 
they will bring music, which I really love. They'll throw in songs to illustrate a point. They will bring the most amazing metaphors. Like one of the things that came out recently is that part of this process that you go through is helping you to clear space so that you will have more clarity to resolve your big hairy obstacles and find peace. And what they said recently was that, you know, it's time to cut the hair on those big hairy obstacles, which is, you know, they, they just come up with these funny stories all the time. But the other thing I was amazed to see is that these people would come and they would ask kind of meekly, is it okay if I talk to Metatron? Yeah, you can talk to any of the archangels. You can talk to any of the enlightened beings. You can talk to your loved ones who have passed. You're going through the Akashic Records. So all of that is available to you. Yeah. Metatron is connected to all of us because he's, he's the overseer of the Akashic Records. Yeah. I think everyone's journey in, in understanding that is, is just so amazing. Like I remember, you know, years ago, it wasn't even that long ago, right? It's just, you go, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, who are the angels? What do they, you know, how do they help us? And and it just becomes like you, you do, you become more connected. I would say, I even feel like friendly, <laughs> you know what I mean? With, with having the conversations and just making it normal, like a normal part of your life. And that's why I love your books because your conversations and your YouTube, like everything, because it, it does make your conversations with Metatron just, just normal. Like he's your friend, you know, and he's here to help and support and love and all the things and share what's going on in the world. So the books really help like solidify that. And so did the Facebook group. I thought it was really amazing. The journey and the process. Yeah. I think so many of us are taught that the angels are over us and like we kind of not worship exactly, but you know, we hold them in this high esteem. And the truth is the angels were sent to serve us. And when you understand that, and then you're not afraid to ask them things or just to be yourself because they know you anyway, right? There's no reason in hiding. Just be you and they'll respond in kind. And and it is like Metatron is my best friend. I feel that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably, I mean, you can agree or disagree, but it's probably if you went to church as a kid, right? You're just raised differently and then you have to kind of shift your whole belief system to, to understand that. At least maybe that's how I feel. So, Yeah, well, I, I grew up in the, the whole Christian paradigm. So yeah. this has been a huge transformation for me learning all of this. I mean, I didn't even believe in reincarnation. And now look where I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my dad and I have those discussions once in a while. Your body goes in the grave. No, no, not really, Dad. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> not yes, your body does, but yeah. So that's a whole other journey and story. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, you know, something, something else that came out of this that was really marvelous is, you know, when I go into the records, and I'm getting these visions and these experiences, it feels real. And your mind is trying to figure that out because, okay, you can feel your body sitting or lying here. You're aware of it. It's not that you lose awareness. It's not like you've gone into a trance. And yet what you're experiencing in the records, no matter how outlandish and crazy, because, you know, all kinds of creatures can come and animals and you're having these adventures, it's real. You feel it. And I didn't totally understand that until I was reading this book, um, Anna, the Grandmother of Jesus, and they talked about bilocation. Had you ever heard of bilocation? No. And you briefly mentioned that on your call on Saturday, actually. I think with Nicole, right? Or I can't remember who you were talking to. Yeah, it might have been Nicole. Uh Yeah. So they explained that the people that um, were in this group, his Jesus's grandmother, his mother, their whole uh, group, they were the Essenes. And these people were more advanced spiritually. I mean, they were beyond what we are right now, most of us. They had the ability to bilocate, which is like your soul leaves your body, you travel somewhere, and you actually are there. You're experiencing that 
And in fact, the people who are there can experience you too. So they explained that if, if you're familiar with the Bible story where after the crucifixion, Jesus shows up on the road to Damascus and talks to his apostles. And they're all confused because they'd seen him killed in the dead body. And yet there he is seemingly in the flesh and real. Mm. So that's by location. Yes, your body is still here, but your soul has traveled. And those experiences are every bit as real as your third dimensional experience. Yeah. That was a big mind blower. Wow. Now, I've always believed that since I can remember, let's say, put it that way. I never heard it called by locate. So I know someone who was actually addicted to doing that and um, like destroyed her business because she could do that and she got addicted to it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's real. And um, I had another point to this piece too. Oh, it kind of goes hand in hand with a story that's in my book, Life and Love Lessons, when I had a reading with a medium. So that's a chapter in my book of something that happened along that line. So I just never heard it by locate. I, I guess I always referred to it as like just transcending or going into another dimension. So, um, yeah. yeah. It's funny because one of my adventures I visited with the Dalai Lama. A cyclops and I went to visit the Dalai Lama who mm -hmm. served us tea and we sat on the floor cross-legged meditating together and he shared a message with us. And I was relating to that story in one of my classes at some point and the people thought I was saying I literally met with the Dalai Lama. And I said, no, that was in a vision. But now I realize I really did. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because we're all energy in different fields, like sliding doors and however you want to. It's my favorite movie. <laughs> so, yeah, all different things happening at the same time. So, yeah, that's really cool. When was that that you met with the Dalai Lama? Oh, that was a long time ago. That was early on in my journey. So it might have been end of 2014, 2015. Oh, oh that's really cool. That'll be coming out in a book when I finally get that book of stories put together. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that'd be really, really awesome. Now, you have had some very nice YouTube success. Congratulations. You had oh, a great year. You. Yay. So if you are not subscribed to Deborah's YouTube channel, you must. And I will have all that information in the show notes along with her book information. But outside of that, when did you start your YouTube channel? And it just made me think of it when you said, you know, the dates for the Dalai Lama and when you started your journey. Yeah, I think I started it in 2014 because I would not get on camera. And I found this mentor who had this video challenge and invited me in. We had to make a little tiny video and post it on YouTube every day of the challenge. And it was a 30-day challenge. So that's how I started the channel and had no idea that it was going to evolve where it has now. But it's turned out to be a really excellent platform to share Metatron's messages. Yeah, yeah. And like I briefly mentioned when I just referred back to the um, other conversation about the, um, the co travel is that Deborah does a monthly call where you can ask your guides. So you just had that. And then you also do a monthly call that I've really gotten into, which is just talking about the metaphysical. Yeah. Once a month, first Monday of the month, I do a metaphysical chat. Yeah. And that's super fun too. Both are excellent. But the the metaphysical one just brings a whole other level of we don't know what's going to happen for conversation. <laughs> so it's also just super fun and different. I really appreciate yes. it. Thank you. And also every year I do either a New Year's Eve or a New Year's oh, Day yeah. live stream. So probably New Year's Day is what I'm thinking because my husband will be doing a run that day. And he won't be around to make noise. So uh, probably New Year's Day, I'll just have to figure out the times and we'll do that for however long. I don't know. We just have a good time. It's a great way to start the year off on a really high vibe energy yeah. level. Yeah. And I think I was on that last year. Yep. 
thank you for reminding me. God, this year was jam packed. And I you know everyone, you know, talks about that, you know, maybe we were you were stuck or things didn't go as maybe you had hoped, but I believe that you can still find some good that happened over the years, you know, the year. You can still find some wins and whether it's things you learned, you know, the, the learnings are the wins because they're preparing you for the next year or even just the future in general. So I consider myself that I had a really good year. I feel like you had a really good year. Yeah, I really do feel like it was a good year. Yeah. And from a numerological standpoint, think about 2022. That's three twos. Oh, yay. Yeah. So I think there's going to be some really amazing things happening. You know, that we still have some bumpy roads ahead. That's something else I do. Once a month, I do an energy forecast from Metatron about what's going to happen in the month. Mm. I just started doing that in June and, and that's been really popular. People are loving that. So I'll it's keep good. doing that. Because it's kind of nice to have a peek at, at what to expect. So right now, Metatron is saying it's, it's going to be bumpy in January. It's not going to be smooth and perfect. But we are moving out of this dark cloud. It's just going to be slower than what we would like. Yeah. And I guess that's how I feel like about 2021. Yes, it was bumpy. The, the things that maybe were challenges for myself or challenges for Ryan and I. But it was still movement right? So that's why I don't look at it so negatively. So I challenge anyone out there that may be going, oh, you know, this year, you know, think of something, even if it was yucky, how did, how's it moving you forward that you learned from it, that you'll have like something more positive happen in the future? Because that's really what this all boils down to at the end of the day, <laughs> is, you know, getting through some of the yucky stuff, clearing away, things that maybe don't serve you anymore. And in hindsight, you go, Oh, I'm glad that's gone now. Okay, good. Moving forward, clean slate, something new. And you have something like more fresh and exciting to look forward to. Yeah, I think it's also a wonderful opportunity to reflect back and reassess your priorities, you know, what really is important to you. Yeah, yeah, that is true, too. Yeah, I know I've just done I, I took my gratitude journal and I'd have to count I think I wrote five pages of whether it's lessons or things I did um you know either way you look at it one's actually you know tangible and one's more intangible and I think I wrote about five pages I'd have to count I kept writing and writing and writing and that's when you realize how much you can accomplish in a year right and then you go, oh my gosh, that's just one little speck of my life. <laughs> so it really helps to put it in perspective of how you can really maximize your time. And, you know, and a lot of it was spiritual growth. So that, that counts people. Like if you're like, hey, I, I did Deborah's 21 meditation challenge and I'm still meditating. That's huge. That's like a really huge win. And you should celebrate that even if maybe other things weren't as perfect as you wanted them to be. That's still a really huge win. So think of even your spiritual growth that you did. If it's, you started to pray, you started to do some type of gratitude practice, which is super important. You know, all those things count, all those things count. So even if something was rough, your spiritual growth is so important. It's actually more important than probably almost anything. Your spiritual practice in your health is what I would say. So yeah. So do a little journaling if you're struggling out there. So. Yeah. And you know, right now, all of the Akashic teams are ramping up to help us start this new year in a really wonderful place. So lean on them, let them help you. Oh, yeah. Mine has a big to-do list. So it has Brian's. <laughs> you know, something that's been happening I don't know if it's something that you might have felt, but the energy is shifting. It's like the veil between the worlds is getting thinner. I would, I would say that. I do believe that more people are um, not only spiritual awakened, but yeah, their intuitions are kicking in, even if they don't fully realize what it is yet. I mean, you had someone on the call on Saturday too. Like she's, 
recognizing that she can hear that she's hearing voices and she's trying to discern, you know, what is that? Right. And that's, that's, it's all coming to you. Like it's all, it's all coming for yourself and to help others, which is amazing and fantastic. Well, they have been trying to communicate with us forever, but the frequency density was just too diverse and it was hard for us to raise up to a level where we could meet them and communicate. But that is shifting because all of the beings on the earth are shifting their vibrate, their vibrational frequency higher to match the evolution of earth. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been talking about a lot on the YouTube channel about moving into earthtopia. And as our frequency rises, it's easier for us to connect with them. So right now for you, it's easier than it's ever been. So why not reach out and connect and let them help you, inspire you, show you the easy way to get there? Because guess what? The guides will tell you there are no brownie points for doing things the hard way. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yes. I've had to learn that myself, actually. So there is a point of taking action and doing the work, but also trusting, allowing, believing, knowing, and letting the guidance come through too, for sure. Yeah, that was an old egoic thing that doing it the hard way meant something. Mm -hmm. And they just laugh because <laughs> why would you do it the hard way when you can do it the easy way? We'll help you. Yeah, just ask for help. Ask for help. I do it all the time. I've been working on something and I'll, I'll kind of do what comes through first. And then I wait and I pray for extra help. Have I missed anything? I'm going on a walk, you know, let me know if I missed anything, anything else I need to add. And, you know, some little extras come through and then I'll add that. And um, yeah, why not? Right. <laughs> why not? But I have to say it does go back to meditation and clearing your mind and less junk so the voice can come through, whether it's your intuition intuition in terms of feeling or hearing or um, seeing, it really does a lot go back to meditation, being able to focus and clear. Because if you're just, you know, busy, 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 yeah, they can't get the messages through. Yeah, and that's why the 21-day challenge is so important because if you just commit to 15 minutes a day, you will be building your muscle so that it will get easier and easier to connect and hear those voices. Yeah. Then it's like, oh, you're just cruising. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And 15 minutes for me is, is not enough. So I'm very lucky that I can do longer. And I do longer twice a day. And if three times fits, then that's really great. But um, yeah, you become like addicted to the quiet, just to the, to the peace and, and being able to get inspire, inspiration and guidance. So yeah, such an amazing process. It is such an amazing process. And I really appreciate that you share so much and help others. Oh, thank you. Well, it's my purpose. That's why I'm here. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I hope everyone listens to her meditation and even goes back, do, do some podcast digging. I'll put the other podcast numbers in there because they're all amazing and different. And um, yeah, it's, it's, you're one of the few people that I listen to meditations from anymore. So I do really appreciate yours. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm just delighted to hear that they resonate for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. Is there anything else you want to add? I know we've got in the show notes, we'll have your book information. We'll have the YouTube information. We'll have the meditation information. And I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't know what it is. So tell me if I am, please. Yeah, well, I just invite everybody, if you'd like to join me on the monthly Zoom call, you need to sign up for my mailing list. So that's akashaunleashed.com slash VIP. Because if you're on my mailing list, you are a VIP. And I want to share the best with you. So we get together on this Zoom call and I channel personal answers for people. 
Awesome. And your, oh yeah. And your emails are one of the only ones I read anymore. Anyways, too. <laughs> so <laughs> she has really good emails. <laughs> So that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the call. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone picks up her books, joins the Facebook group to do the challenge. I promise you, you will learn so much about yourself and connect with your guides even further. If you're already connected, it is worth every 15 minutes of your day. And if you can do longer, like I do, like do longer. So, (laughs) but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. This is just a really wonderful way to kick off the holiday. Yes, I know. And the new year, I'm just, I'm very blessed. I love like when I look and see, you know, podcasts go all over the world. It's just like an amazing way to reach people and and share the message. So over this holiday season into the new year, I'm sending everyone lots of love and blessings and good health. And again, like do some journaling. If you think you had a rough year, you'll find some bright spots and celebrate those and focus on those in terms of moving forward. So you can have an amazing 2022 and appreciate those numbers. (laughs) So, all right. Well, thank you, Deborah. Yeah, my pleasure. See you soon. Thank you. Bye.